This is Watkins. Welcome with Bridget Fetisy. I'm Bridget Fetisy, and you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You know the drill. Please subscribe, rate, comment, share, reach out, tell your friends, send smoke signals, whatever. We love your feedback and we want to hear from you. This week we have our second repeat guest of the year and of the podcast, Andrew Doyle. He's the comedian behind satirical Twitter account Titania McGrath, a radical intersectionalist, feminist, and slam poet who is constantly telling people how oppressed she is. He's the author of Woke, A Guide to Social Justice, and absolutely brilliant. I love Andrew. It's just a joy to have him come in, sit down, and catch up. He's a buddy now. He's a homie now. We're doing it. Let's do it. Andrew Doyle (laughs) is back on adventures that we're about to hear about. So welcome back. You're the second second repeat guest Rockin's Welcome has ever had. I'm honored. We had Malice. That's really good. He was our first. Yeah. And he called and was like, hey, I'm in town. Are walk-ins welcome? I'm like, well, that is the name of my show. <laughs> so he invited himself on again <laughs> for a second time. He just was like, I'm around. And it's, he, we always have such a good time when well, we do our podcast. We all have a lot to say, don't we? So I think you, it merits more than one visit. Do you stop writing when you start talking? Because I feel like I've been doing a lot less writing. I know what you mean. Yeah. I actually went up because I'm, I'm writing a new book at the moment. And it's, it means I've, it's taken over my whole life and I don't do other things. It's, all, it's awful, really. Yeah. I can either do one thing or the other. Yeah. You know. I haven't I feel like I haven't written anything and I really want to write um Malice and I were talking about this. I want to write the accidental pundit and have it be just the story of how I ended up in this random space. Yeah. Because it's a story everyone wants to hear from me. They're like, How how did you Yeah end up like why do I see you being retweeted by Ben Shapiro? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, sit down, child. It's a strange tale of yeah. culture wars and mudslinging. Uh, do they say that in a in a positive way or an antagonistic way? It depends on who I'm talking to. Okay. And it's interesting because left wing and far right wing hate that that, yeah. that we and I interact. Um, far right calls the, you know, the very far right considers Ben Shapiro, Dave Rubin. They, they get so much shit from both sides. Yeah. It's crazy. And he gets stuff from the alt right. Yeah. For, for being and, Jewish. And, right? and, and they, and, and being Jewish and also just, they call it conservative ink. Okay. So it's like not well, conservative enough. I get, I mean, I, I lost a, uh, well, I won't say friend, but an acquaintance over Ben Shapiro retweeting me. But so Ben Shapiro and Uncle Coulter retweeted something I did, <laughs> and um, and I was talking to someone over Facebook who I'd known for years, and then and then towards the end he said, um, "Well, I can see now you're being uh, you're 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 in with Ann Coulter and Ben Shapiro, so I think we should leave this here." And I replied, and the reply didn't go through, and I, I'd realised he'd blocked me. So straight, you know. So that's I didn't even get a chance to respond to that. That's crazy. That's mad. Like I, I, I and you hadn't even. They just retweeted. It you. was just retweeting. Yeah, that, yeah. like <laughs> you have any freaking control over that? I know it's mad. I know somebody <laughs> got mad. Um, my friend the other day sent me a screenshot, and I think Stephen Molyneux had retweeted them. Okay, and and they were like, "Do you ever?" question everything you're doing with your life when someone on twitter retweets you yeah but they don't they don't screenshot the the people who they support who retweet you you know no. it'll, it'll just be those ones every now yeah. and then but but also i would talk to ben shabir and uncle so what's wrong with that i would no, do, it's, I, there's nothing wrong with it's it what you can talk to other human beings not in 2020 <laughs> no not in 2020 so a lot has happened yeah. you guys kicked out the labor party yes <laughs> quite well they were never in power to yeah, be fair true. but we, we completely bludgeoned their dreams in a quite brutal way i would say like i have a question because i had a theory okay is it because of extinction rebellion (laughs) (laughs) wow what that really can you talk me through that theory so i remember because in dumpster fire we cover a lot of extinction extinction rebellion because they're so ridiculous yeah and they were super gluing their hands and stopping traffic. Yeah. And then there was that really the big famous one that went viral when all the guys, the blue collar workers were pulling them down off the top of the tube. In London. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And I was wondering, I'm like, I wonder how this is going to affect the way that like blue collar workers and labor perceives 
yeah, perceives it, the le- the like that party. Yeah, but you know, it's really Extinction Rebellion. I don't know how how big are they over here, or is it mostly a UK thing at the moment? Um, they, they seem to pop off a lot in the UK. Yeah, they're here a little bit, and um, Australia. I always see okay. Videos. They just show up to glue themselves to things. That's what they. That's their. <laughs> that's their shtick, right? And um, they they must spend a lot of money on glue and, and I th- glitter and, and glitter. Yeah, which is hilarious. To me. They, they, they're they, throwing freaking they have this high camp kind of like a pagan uh look it looks like something out of the wicker man you know they're all dressed in these pagan robes and right. they do chanting and that sort of thing um but yeah that's an interesting question because how the left because they're all quite rich like the, the extinction rebellion lot are quite middle class yeah you know they're not they're not your kind of like you say blue collar workers and when, yeah and when they're confronted with it they get dragged off the train because <laughs> because obviously you know, when they're stopping people going to work and things like that, yeah. which is what they do. And of course, normal people need to get to work. Yeah. They don't have the luxury of taking days off to glue themselves to people. <laughs> they don't have Or the luxury. roads. No, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it annoys the people. But it does annoy most people. It does. No, who has time for that? And no. that's what it, it's funny. At One of my family members, when Trump won, yeah. he called me and he was like, are you out protest? Oh, I thought you'd be out protest. I'm like, why the hell would I be protesting? Because that was not my... I think he just assumed because I lived in LA that I'd be protesting, right. which fair enough. I never got that though. We had that the day after Boris Johnson won the general election. There were all these protests in London. Not my prime minister. That was the thing. Not my prime minister. But we had a democratic process. You had your vote. Right. That's, that's, it's fine. It, like, that's, you have to exist in this loser's consent. You have to... If you, right. if you lose... You have to still be able to say, but that's still the person who runs the country. Right. You, you can't just opt out because, you know. You don't like it. No. That's always how democracies work. Yeah, but that's the weird, weird time that we're in that's yeah. kind of terrifying is in order to, we need to subvert democracy. This is the big argument with the impeachment is yeah. that they're essentially saying we can't let him run again right. in, in trying to tr- de- in trying to minimize his win from 2016. Yeah. They're essentially saying we can't let him run again to preserve democracy. It's so, so crazy. So we need to subvert democracy in order to preserve I mean, it. Impeachment is something that should be used as an absolute last resort. <laughs> like if, if the if the guy in the Oval Office has gone crazy and is running around naked, smearing himself in glue, and that's, that that would be. You it's know, all like theater. I, it's mad. So what? Wait, I was gonna actually ask something else too because when who. What do these people do for work? Like the Extinction Rebellion people? I think they're just people. independently wealthy. Right. I think they must be, for the most part. Right. Or they're kids who've skipped school. That's the other thing. Cause, oh, because uh, now that, you're allowed to skip school. Y- oh, yeah. I mean... That, for the climate. For the climate. You can I skip. would totally have been like a crazy climate change oh, activist if I could have gotten out of school every uh, Friday. A hundred percent. Yeah. I would have been glittering <laughs> all over the world. I know, because I mean, th- th- who wouldn't do that? No. It seems like a really good excuse. And particularly because you can't... Mm-hmm. No one can challenge you on that. Like the teachers can't force you into school because it looks like then they hate the environment they want you to burn. Right. You know? Right. There is a really alarmist... Like, I, I have sympathy with the cause you know, and the sympathy with the idea of, you know, let's look after the environment. Let's not trash the world. Right. That seems like a perfectly legitimate thing to say. What isn't legitimate is saying that we're all going to be dead in 10 years <laughs> and that the young, scaring these young kids by telling them we're all, you, you're going to die. And they're all die. depressed. And they're they all, all depressed. Have, yeah. They have, they have anxiety. The high, they have the highest rate of anxiety, depression, yeah. they suicide. Miss, they can't do exams anymore because a lot of them are talking about this anxiety, this climate-based anxiety that they have. You know, they're freaking a doom. It's a doomsday cult, though. Yeah, it's a giant media orchestrated doomsday it's cult. It's weird, isn't it? It's yeah, odd. it's odd. Um, couldn't there be a sensible, you know, sensible way to say let's look out after the environment without without saying we're all going to perish in flames? And the way that they express it and protest it, and I always mock it on Twitter and on Dumpster Fire. I'm yeah. like, clean a fucking beach. Yeah. Yeah, what are do, you doing? Something. do something. I see you dancing on a beach and like crawling and doing weird things. <laughs> but what, like, why don't you, you know how much better it would be if you took this energy every Friday and went and like cleaned something? Yeah, sure. Exactly. Instead of just walking around and making more garbage with your, with your poster boards. I mean, not as much fun, I guess. Because at least when they, when they gather around and they've got Emma Temp- Thompson there and people like that, they can have fun. They play their acoustic instruments. They do their, their sing songs and stuff. That's that's more fun. I went to one of the Extinction Rebellion protests to see what it was all about. And Emma Thompson was there. She'd flown in from L.A. On a private jet. On a private jet. And the <laughs> la- actually, it wasn't a private jet, but she did go first class. Yeah. But she did that at the last minute just to, to, to sort of lecture everyone about their carbon footprint, which was already hilarious. And then all these kids started doing these poems 
these terrible poems about like it's like it was like an open mic it was like one at a time i loved it it was really funny (laughs) and there were people sitting there with their starbucks and and you think there's a real look just be consistent yeah (laughs) you know just please you know i've had this conversation so many times with people who, who hate billionaires yeah and they always do Jeff Bezos. He's like the target du yeah. jour. And they're like, well, Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> do you use Amazon? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my first question. Exactly. And the answer is always yes. And then there's a justification for why they need to use it. Like, <laughs> well, I live in a rural area. Or I live in I live in a city. Or I, I'm like, well, then you're only proving that he's created yeah. something that we need ultimately it's funny isn't it when, when the people get so angry about this stuff and they're tweeting on their smartphones yeah which were created by chinese children i know, uh, you know that i can't it's it i i accept that it's difficult to live in the world uh, and not be and a not hypocrite be, uh, and not be it, yeah. it's really hard yeah it's impossible um but at least have a sense of humor about that right or at <laughs> least have a sense of self-awareness about yeah. it i that, mean i love tweeting get wrecked china sent from my iphone yeah you know, yeah like, <laughs> that's great it's like my favorite thing and this is it like i i even if you care about this cause and everything just just it's it's the, I tell you what, it's the humorlessness of it that makes me laugh. Yeah, it's the fact that they can't laugh at themselves. No, I think that's all, that's always going to make me laugh. No matter because what it is. everything is an existential crisis. Yeah, that yeah. that's the that's the I think that's what I react to the most. Right. is that this sense of life being so serious and politics are an existential crisis and the climate is an existential crisis and everything is an. I'm like, I, come on, yeah. like. We could look at Kobe. We could freaking die in in the blink of an eye. Exactly. We don't know how much time exactly. we have. So lighten the fuck up. Yeah. Like we don't know. Everything's an extreme. Everything. So Trump as well. Trump is the end of the world. Trump is fa- a fascist takeover. Yeah, the, he's of the an US. existential crisis. Boris Johnson is a fascist takeover of the UK. Uh, it, it it's so extreme, and and that's that's why we've got to laugh at it. Ultimately, it's the only solution. But then it's also kind of mind-boggling because i am worried about the mental health of some of these people well yeah yeah because when you're saying things yesterday i saw something on twitter and somebody was saying they of course there was a a supreme court ruling about immigration and how you you have to have you know background money or something like that and everybody's just like oh of course they would make this decision on the anniversary of auschwitz because you don't even know the crimes that are coming and the the atrocities that are about to occur. I'm like, you guys are wow. fucking conspiracy theorists. Yeah, yeah. So play this tape forward for me, please. It's, it's, do you think that Boris is going to kill six million people? But they do. Or, or, or Trump. Or, or they think it's an equivalent somehow. That, but is that just because they don't know about history? And they I don't, don't like, know. It, is that all it is? I mean, I don't know. What the, what's weird about that? I mean, I don't know how much media coverage boris gets over here he's actually for a conservative is a pretty liberal That's, conservative yeah. like he's not particularly you know in the way that that trump is not um comparably right wing compared to some of the republicans no. right you know he's not even a republican no he's not <laughs> so just, he's basically a populist democrat who turned into a republican to become president right so <laughs> and it's okay to disagree with him but why do you have to be so alarmist about it why not just say this, this is why i disagree with what he's doing and, it's you know, an that would existential be... crisis everything everything has to be like i it is like but this one goes up to 11 you know oh, everybody you know, right? i have some sympathy well, sometimes i see people tweeting and say you know when's the meteor coming when when is the asteroid going to hit us you know because and i do get to that point of things so can i let's just end, let, please let it end because it's every day now you know there's some there's something every day i mean this morning there was the thing the news story about the um some some woman in london an expert obviously an academic talking about how uh, managers in, in big companies should ban uh, their employees from talking about football because it alienates women it alienates female it makes women in the workplace feel inferior and i think i can't deal with this stuff that's so patronizing to women it's so infantilizing when i hear this shit it's it i think believe all women is infantilizing i mean so much of it is why because women aren't capable of lying i know like what what do you think i am like an innocent baby and that's not to say you don't take complaints seriously about stuff but it is to say let's treat everyone as human beings who are capable of deceit somebody (laughs) said this to me yesterday about the, there some woman a woman reached out to me she's like you've been assaulted like how do you balance the believe all women with kobe yeah. and all of the hero worship and i was like first of all i reject the premise of believe all women yeah i yeah, think yeah. give the give women the benefit of the doubt of course yeah, yeah, yeah and also give the accused 
the benefit of innocent until presumed guilty. I, I mean, I saw, I was, I thought it was really distasteful the number of uh, articles com- jumping on Kobe straight away about this stuff. Like on the day, I on, on the, the hour, yeah, unbelievable. On the, as the news was breaking, I ended up commenting. I don't like pile ons. Yeah, I try yeah, yeah, to yeah. stay out of them. I don't quote tweet people for this reason. Oh right, yeah, that's, that's nice. And this woman, the one who got suspended from the Washington Post, Mm. she tweeted out a two-year-old article from the Daily Beast talking about how he was a rapist. I just happened to be online seeing everything breaking as it was breaking, and I saw her article, and so I immediately reacted to it because it came as the news of the daughter was breaking. So I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, I think that's borderline sociopathic. It's, there's something wrong it's, with you. What is that instinct? Just leave it for a while. You know, just a week or something. Or uh, two hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Not I mean, as the news is literally it's, it's, breaking and the world is finding out. Like, we, it was as, a, and it, it, I think she got it doubly bad because it was as the news of the daughter was breaking. Yeah. And so I was, I commented on it and the comment has now been like, it's in magazine articles. Oh, okay. And okay. One of those. So, because I, I shamed her basically. And I, and I'm not really one to be like mob people and shame them. Yeah. But in that instance, I was like, what is wrong? I'm like, this is so gross. I was like, someone just lost her father and her sister. Yeah. People just, lo- a woman just lost her husband. We don't even know who else is on the plane. People lost their hero. You couldn't wait like an hour to trample on the memory of the deceased. It's that thing about the ideological purity. So every other consideration falls by the wayside. It's just. But it's weird because she came back and then doubled down on it because she's an idiot. And she said, Oh, I was just presenting facts. Like, no, you're not. You're a reporter. Facts would be, hey, we heard that there were nine other people, there were seven other people on the plane, not five. Yeah. And facts would be, we heard that his daughter is deceased. This is a two-year-old article. You have an agenda. We all saw through it. You rightfully got piled on, and now you're a victim? I like, thi- that's insane to me. I think the pile-on thing, um, you see, I, I try to avoid pile-ons if someone, you know, if someone's just some someone on Twitter who's not got many followers and, you know, but if it's the Washington, if it's a big publication, then they deserve the the criticism. You know, that's, yeah. a, that's important. But it also really reminds me that, of the lack of compassion within the social justice movement. It's incredible yeah, to me. Yeah. Uh, and it, the reason it's incredible is because they proclaim to be such compassionate people. But all of their actions appear to be the opposite. Yes. It, it, this utter cruelty, this kind of vengeful malice, which I guess uh, they can justify to themselves because they, they, they've they identified this evil in society that needs to be wiped out. And mm-hmm. therefore, it's, it just... This is one of the things I can't... I can't stand bullying. I can't stand it. And I see people in the social justice movement not all of them but a, a substantial proportion just attacking and victimizing and, and uh, destroying people's lives i can't yeah. stand it i can't stand it so then she got suspended which i'm not uh, i don't oh, I agree know with that. that okay i, I don't agree with this right um this call what the washington post handled mm. it weirdly and then um so everyone was like great job bridge i thought you didn't believe in cancel culture i'm like i didn't send the mob after no, her no. i she tweeted something and i responded with an opinion it's not my fault that i just happened to be the first person who saw her article come out yeah yeah no, because you- of timing and then my tweet stayed at the top because everybody was liking it because they were like yeah fuck yeah they i yeah. just happened to speak what everyone felt when they this saw is a it. typical strategy so so when you reply someone says something really hostile and awful someone replies critically and suddenly the, they become the victim because they've been criticized so she it's a really typical pattern but then yesterday i was getting i was getting frustrated and mad because everyone was coming to me and being like i thought you didn't believe in cancel culture bridget and i was i was like i didn't cancel her no. i never called to mob her you don't have the power I didn't to cancel even <laughs> quote tweet her it's and by the way I've this has happened to me. This happened to me with Black Twitter. Rightfully, yeah. I said something stupid yeah. before I had coffee. They all came for me. I logged out and let it blow over because that's what you do yeah. if you're not an idiot. And I recognize, like, okay, I sh- probably could have said something differently. Yeah, sure. This is being interpreted in the worst faith ever. Yeah. And anything like James Lindsay from for the one of the grievance studies yep, guys. Yeah, I know. He he texted me, he saw what was going on and he's like everything you say is going to make it worse. Yeah. It's only <laughs> it's only going to be evidence of your racism 
and log out. You know, he's like, there's nothing you can say. I've seen it happen to him too. Yeah. Like he'll say something that, that requires, well, like if, he's, if he writes a thread, I, the one I saw, the first tweet on the thread was quite incendiary. But then if you read the whole thread, it sort of <laughs> makes sense because he explains it properly. Right, right. But no one reads beyond the first one. No. So he gets all this. Like piled on. Yeah. And and I, sh- I should have responded like how to, what I should write is a piece of like what to do in a pile on. Yeah. And oh, that would be useful. Yeah, it is useful because I was sh- saying to her, she like then posted screenshots and then she was saying I was just posting facts and I'm like, so you're going to double down with a little gif. Yeah. And then she started posting screenshots of her email, which was her work email. And I was like, log out. Like, yeah, you're, yeah. I, I know what it feels like to be piled on. And it is when the whole internet comes for you, it's overwhelming. Yeah. And I did. And one time I kicked the hive of incels and... <laughs> I kicked it intentionally yeah. and then they all came for me and it was dangerous and I ended up getting like docs and I ha- it, it was bad. I won't yeah, yeah. be doing that again. But I did. I certainly wasn't like, look at me. I'm a victim because I fucking kicked the hive. Yeah. So if you're going to do something like that, which is clearly incendiary, like posting something about Kobe being a rapist as his news is breaking of his death. Yeah. Yeah. What do you fucking expect? Exactly. No, exactly. And um, and people are right to criticize you for that. So it's like, you know, it's fine. And now she's a victim. And then it was a whole new cycle yesterday of reporters writing about each other. But that would be a good uh, thing to write about. Like, what 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 is a good strategy to deal with pylons? What is the best way to do it? You know, because I got piled on by, weirdly, it was by the uh, K-pop fans, Korean oh, fans. Oh, shit. That's and, terrifying. Now I, <laughs> but also because there's a kind of cultural difference. So I didn't really understand what it was all about. Uh, and they all posted certain gifs and certain images that I just didn't get the reference. Right. I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Right. Uh, and um, so it was absolutely crazy because I think they were annoyed because I'd criticized Sam Smith, the singer. Okay. And they're all Sam Smith fans, apparently. Oh, there's a, apparently he's big in K-pop w- world. I don't know what that means. Okay. But yeah, and, and it was and what you just said is the right. You just you just mute, they move on. You mute it. So so that particular tweet, I won't delete it, but I'll mute it. And then, then you just don't see any of the responses anyway. And, it, and the, also, they're all so unhinged. That there, there's no set. You can't engage with that. Yeah. You, you can't engage with someone just posting GIFs at you. Yeah. I know. definitely just, I deleted mine. The, with the incel guys. Um, the, I deleted those. I deleted the ones with black Twitter. Well, it's with, deleting it the right way then maybe. Just delete the tweet and forget about it. Um, it lives forever. I know it's out there. I yeah. know that someday it'll be like, remember the time that Bridget was a grand wizard and she said that she <laughs> okay. won't engage in the, because what happened that, that instance was, I think it was GQ or somebody had a white teenager as right. the cover for, and it happened to be black history month and it was the c- cover of their like young teenagers. Yeah. And then the teenager was getting piled on and GQ was getting piled on. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not doing this i'm not engaging in the demonization of white men yeah and i should have just said men and i hadn't had coffee yet and there is a demonization of white men but i didn't know that's historically white supremacist language is it Uh, i I, I didn't know apparently according to all of the blue checks on black twitter i don't know if that's i don't know if that's well i don't know i've never come across that as being and they call i don't know they they called me a lot of it was a lot of garbage and and you know there's there is that moment of of like okay maybe this is something i just need to do more like learn more fine yeah but you are allowed to misspeak aren't we as human beings we're allowed to say the wrong thing from time Mm, to time and then dad (laughs) no I would, in this case, not recommend it. No, no, I wouldn't recommend it, but it's, but, but I think it's, it, it, well, I don't know of a single human being who hasn't said something they regret yeah. or don't regret, you know, yeah. that we all do. So, I mean, it's not, it, yeah, it's a bad situation. But but in terms of that, the sort of, um, I saw that thing the other day, this Saturday Night Live sketch about Joker and the Irishman, about white male rage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're talking about the demonization of white people, I mean, I, I, I saw that sketch and I thought, what is the joke here? Because those films aren't about white male rage. No. They're about a lot more than, than that. And I don't even know what white male rage is. Like, I think rage is perhaps you could argue is more common amongst men than women for biological reasons, but I don't think it's a racial thing particularly. No, it's, like, it's, like, it's This is where I love Helen because she's like, you have to just reject the premise. The premise is wrong. That's that, what I mean. That's like, what, and that has been the most helpful situation in dealing with 
critical theorists yeah. or people who are coming at me and I'm aware that it's, you know, under it's social justice with the critical theory. Right. Is that I reject this premise that we are that the idea of like whiteness, you yeah, know, yeah, as yeah. this thing is it's a conspiracy theory. Like it's not, you know? it's, 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 not like, it's not it's not grounded in anything. It's very strange, but it it's something that is very pleasing to white guilt people. Yeah. You know what? We were having this conversation the other day on a podcast I did that was really interesting with Greg Hurwitz and Marshall um, Herskovitz. Mm-hmm. And they were, they're liberals. Like yeah, they're, yeah. you know, like not leftists, but liberals. And we were talking about how it makes sense that you could recognize that I don't get pulled over, that there are certain sure. injustices sure. that I might not be exposed to. And and so the idea of privilege gets very slippery because they're, you know, tell a white man who grew up in a trailer park that he has privilege. I think, yeah, I think it's the use of the word privilege that's the problem. Right. I don't think anyone's denying that in certain circumstances, uh, black people are more likely to be pulled over, say, or to have those sort of disadvantages. Which is an injustice. Which is an injustice. Right. But, But when you start throwing the word privilege and saying white privilege... The resentment that causes is mostly because a lot of white people aren't privileged. Right. Basically. And that's what they were saying. They made a really interesting point is that you should always approach it from what is the injustice. Yeah. You know, if we're looking at it from a perspective of are there injustices in our society? But they also made the very astute observation that people perceive that there are these injustices. Mm -hmm. And because we are a society that's actually caring and then the whole concept of white guilt attaches itself to this whiteness. Yeah. You know, it's just something that's easily adopted. And then they start, that's how it becomes this thing where suddenly you have the apologizing for being white. Yeah. Well, I think rejecting the principle of whiteness is a good start. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me. Like there was a conference in Edinburgh recently called Resisting Whiteness. And the, the if you attended the conference, right, there was a and a at the end, you know, where people wanted to ask their questions, but you weren't allowed to ask a question if you were white. That was one of the, <laughs> the rules. And this is run by young activists, you know, in their late, yeah. late teens, early 20s. And um, but then how do you make that judgment? What if someone's mixed race, but they look white? Right. Do they have to produce a birth certificate in it's order so to? It's so crazy. And but then maybe whiteness isn't to do with skin color. I saw I saw a story. It was American. It was American. There was a um, a black. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, a a couple of Indian uh, kids attacked some black schoolgirls, and instead of saying this was a racist attack, they said they were enacting whiteness. Yeah, but there were no white people there. There was a whole th- <laughs> yeah. There was a whole thread yesterday about how even though it was about that whole American dirt controversy, which is chilling. Um, so. In the literary world this past week or whenever, a month ago, whenever yeah. this launches, there was a big controversy because Oprah picked American Dirt to be her book of the month. Right. And American Dirt was written by a white woman about the immigrant experience. I see. Okay. Okay. And it's fiction. And there had been a lot of criticism of this book in the literary community. And I actually think I read a lot of really thoughtful pieces where I'm like, this is a fair criticism yeah and then when oprah lifted her up as the as this for this book yeah everybody was like what happened what about all the like brown voices that have experienced this and this is just an example of the white publishing industry and then somebody was saying just because it's oprah doesn't mean that she's not partaking in whiteness because essentially capitalism is a function of white supremacy Uh, okay so now oprah's white is that what? This is what they were saying <laughs> about Obama when he went after maybe, the woke crowd. I mean, maybe Oprah just liked the book. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's as she simple as... She did like the book. Maybe it's as simple as that. Maybe she maybe did. she's not obsessed with race in the way that other people are, you know? <laughs> like this, this whiteness, it's, it's so, so But weird. then what's even more chilling is that now all the book, all the places that were having her on the book tour, three of them, as of yesterday, had canceled. Because okay. they were getting mobbed by activists who were saying they were going to show up and they couldn't. It always comes down to the safety. They're like, we can't, we can't say that this is now a safe so, event. 
So then now with this sort of thing, it feels like whiteness is, is more like original sin. It's more like some sort of evil. It's like a substitute for evil. It is. And it doesn't matter about skin color. It, ma- it matters about behavior and... and, and but this and, is like whiteness is the original sin of wokeism. You know, if wokeism is the religion, whiteness is the original so sin. So I get in trouble because I'm doing a tour called Resisting Wokeness in the UK, right? <laughs> with a guy called Douglas Murray, uh-huh. who's an author. And we're getting loads I of I love flack. his book. Yeah, it's great. It's great, right? Holy shit. It's really good. It's amazing. And and we I want him tell him to come on the I podcast. will. I will absolutely. He's brilliant. Yeah. But the thing about this is is like people have been complaining to the venues and 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 sending us messages and getting really angry and what they're saying all the time is but to be woke simply means to be alert to social injustice and racism. I'm like, but I support that. That's right. not what I mean by woke. Wokeness is something more. It's more. It's 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 become like you say a religion. Right. This kind of thing that has its heretics and has its original sin and 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 has this unforgiving quality that they want to demonize anyone who isn't this you know on board. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about being aware of racism. That's a good thing. Be aware of racism, but don't just call everyone racist. <laughs> like That's a- the slippery weird slope. And when I always say I see fascism kind of on all sides, it, uh, you know, it just seems to be we live in a time that seems ripe for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the creeping authoritarianism that I see on the left for some reason is more chilling to me than the stuff I see on the right, maybe because the stuff on the right is so much more overt. I think it's it's also because it's gone mainstream on the left. Whereas on the right, 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 the authoritarian qualities of the right tend to be quite far right. You know, right. they're not they're not the sort of people standing up in mainstream scenarios and writing for mainstream publications or coding for Google and Twitter. Right. Or, That's it. That's you it. know, or working at YouTube or teaching the children at academia in academia yeah. or That's why it's having scarier. the mainstream channel of the news yeah that's why it's scary yeah that's why it's far more scary because the the because the clout that they have yeah it's the people who like you say run the silicon valley tech giants you don't want those people being the authoritarians jesus no! you don't want to give those people the power <laughs> but too late because they got it well and that's know? what i was saying yesterday is as much as like this administration is a shit show and divisive and i have so many inter- yeah. it, you know i hate the way they demonize people and it's funny because now I see pe- everybody's becoming him. Everybody's becoming Trump. Yeah. <laughs> like even last night, did you see the, there's a clip of Don Lemon. It's been going, making the rounds No, I haven't everywhere. seen this one. No, I haven't seen it. There, Rick Wilson's on, who's a never Trumper, and yeah. then Don Lemon, and then another one of the people from, another CNN, I think, contributor or yeah. guy. And Rick Wilson made some joke about Ukraine and how you couldn't find you. It's like they couldn't find it unless it was like you with a crane. And they're like, all oh, those educated elitists with their knowledge of geography. And Don Lemon was crying so hard, laughing so hard he was crying. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'll watch this. It is so ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm like, you guys are... Are you trying to get Trump elected? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's it's the same in the UK. We have We have mainstream politicians who are... Well, there was one guy called David Lammy, who's a Labour politician, who said that people who supported Brexit were worse than Nazis. And he like that's not even like some fringe politics, like a mainstream. Yeah. Th- yeah. Th- this stuff is everyone's saying the most extreme. At least this is horrifying though, to me because I'm reading The Choice, which is a memoir of an Auschwitz survivor. Yeah. She wrote it when she was 89. And it is I it took me like. I couldn't put it down. The first chapter is her story. Yeah. And it is beyond comprehension. Right. Beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the things that I read in that memoir will haunt me forever. Right. Just, the Choice, it's called. It's called The Choice. Right. And it is, I mean, even just, and she was, she's considered the ballerina of Auschwitz. Right. And Mangle loved her for some reason. And he used to have, she like danced to save her life for him. But oh. then just, he was a sadistic, there's a 20 minute documentary on him on YouTube and you'll never be the same. Like the things that guy, that guy was a, a, a sociopath. Yeah. Of the next, like a next level sociopath, yeah, 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 yeah. and um, the the ways in which they just tormented people, and and it, it it's beyond. So when I and I kind of have joked about how like oh we're all Nazis now, but when I read this book, so I'm like the fact it is it is so minimizing and 
just disrespectful. You know, I think people just need to learn more about history and, le- and learn about what the Nazis actually did. It is... So then they wouldn't be so flippant about the use of that word. You it's know? crazy. It, it's, it's because it is disrespectful to the people who suffered under Nazism. It's so disrespectful. You know? It's just, it's, I can't. I cannot get my mind around it. Even reading that memoir, it was just, I'm like, how can you say with a straight face that Trump is Hitler? Yeah. How, and know this. Yeah. Or do you just not know I this? I don't think they know. I don't think they know. I, I, I imagine they can't know. Because if Trump was Hitler, there wouldn't be an opposition party now because he would have shut down the opposition party. That's what Nazis do. Right. They, they, they turn it into a one-party state. You know, it's not, it's not comparable. It, re- it really isn't. However much you hate him, there would be it's, no resistance. Right, exactly. Yeah, he, would, yeah, he'd be killing, he'd be disappearing and killing off his enemies. Right. Because that's what Nazis do. <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't be standing there debating them in the Senate. And they you certainly know, like, wouldn't be letting them march through Times Square. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's still a free country. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. The, that's, I don't know, it was really upsetting to me. Yeah, that. yeah. Well, you know, what, we've had lots of messages calling us neo-Nazis and stuff because we're doing this resisting wokeness tour. And, and so it's what like, are you, well, is it like a the how-to? It's a, is it no, like a TED talk or no, is it it's comedy? No, it's a discussion. Okay. It's a political discussion thing. So the idea is that we're going to, that we're going to sit there in the first half and talk. It's going to be moderated by another person called Ashley Frawley and she's going to sort of moderate the event. And then in the second half, it's all Q&A with the audience because our whole thing is, People in the UK, I don't know how it is here, but people in the UK are really nervous about talking about certain things. Right. Because they get in trouble for it. Right. Um, particularly sensitive issues like trans right. issues and things like that. So we're saying, you know, this is a forum where we can t- actually talk about these ideas, these 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 themes without any fear um, and, and try and work out where to go next. Try and work out how to combat this. It isn't um, a militant thing. You know, we, we we genuinely want to hear different viewpoints on right, this. That's right. the idea. So it's a discussion show. Okay, that's um, interesting. But then we had a group in Liverpool, talk, I think they were from Antifa, uh, saying we, we're going to turn up and th- they said thou shalt not pass. I think their phrase is, which I thought was what Gandalf said in the film, but it, it's apparently an Antifa phrase. You shall not pass or whatever. I, anyway, it's crazy. It's crazy because um, these are just sort of middle class students in, in black masks. <laughs> who say and they they're gonna... think you're fascist? Apparently. <laughs> it, it's really weird. I mean, we've even though neither of us have ever, ever said anything remotely fascist. Well, uh, in fact, you know, that I would say that fascism is the opposite of my worldview. Yeah. About as far removed from my worldview as you could get. Well, so, where do you, you know, I said in 2020, I don't, I fail daily on Twitter at this, but yeah. I, because it's so hard on Twitter not to make fun of everything yeah, and sure. everyone. But how... I would like to be more conscious of, you know, what I'm standing for as opposed to what I'm standing against Absolutely. or resisting because I, I get fairly called a reactionary. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm reacting to your insanity. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. And I think it's what. Are, yeah, exactly. What to react against the kind of woke movement, you should be for something. And I think what to be I think what I'm for is the idea of, of fundamental liberal values such as free speech, freedoms, individual freedom, empathy, you know, not writing people off and demonizing and destroying their lives. I mean, we can be for all of this stuff, but it's, and that's a way to resist that movement because the social justice movement is not for empathy or, Interesting. or for. They would argue that they are, though, aren't right. they? Right. This is, this is why it's so difficult to combat because yeah. I don't, they, 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 yeah, what they're saying is like all religious cults, like, you know, you go back long enough. The Catholics were burning people in the name of love. Right. You know, that's... that's this the... is what I always say. I'm like, they thought the people of the m- part, members of the Inquisition thought they were doing, they yeah. were on the right side of history. Yeah. Oh, 100%. They thought they were doing God's work. Yeah. You know, that, I mean, you know, even Al-Qaeda think they're doing God's work. Yeah. They do, these, you know, it's... It's really, you know, obviously I shouldn't compare the social justice movement to Al Qaeda, but the principle. Although I often do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the principle of <laughs> doing bad things and thinking you're doing good things is something that is connected historically with religion, always right, with religion, right, always. You know, right. Um, it, that's that's the American physicist Steven Weinberg said this thing about, uh, you know, in order for good people to do bad things, that takes religion. You know, so right, uh, right. in a in a world without religion, you'd have bad people doing bad things and good people doing good things. Right. But you put in religion into the mix and. And you can have good people doing really right. terrible things. And of course, that applies to social justice as well. You know, right. so, so we, we can. And that's the other thing is I think one thing we can all be for is the things that the social justice activists say they're for, but don't actually help. 
things like be opposed to racism. Right. Be opposed to homophobia. Not cultivate a society where we actually make racism worse by dividing everyone up and, and demanding into that people get judged groups, right? into groups, right? And demanding that they get judged on their skin color beyond all other things. Right. That's what's awful about the movement is they're making they're, all the things they purport to stand for, they're making worse. And they I, really are. And I think also acknowledging what I found is acknowledging nuance in yeah. in pushing back. So yeah. I saw that thing. This was a British thing, the Lawrence Fox thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That went viral where he was saying um, to the woman where she's like, it's all racism. That's yeah. why they left. And he was like, no, it's not. No, it's not. I'm like, well... It's disingenuous to say that it's all racism, but I feel it's just as disingenuous to say that there wasn't some aspect of racism. So, so this occurring. is the Meghan Markle and, and Prince Harry, yes. the way they've been treated in the press. So the thing about that is, like, I think any kind of blanket statement about that is going to be wrong. Right. I also think, though, that saying something is racist, you have to be damn sure. You need some evidence. You can't just throw that word around. And, right. Um, and all the supposed evidence I've seen of the media being racist isn't really evidence at all. It's okay. just, it's, it's negative coverage. That that in itself isn't enough for me. Right, I need to right. see more than that. You know, maybe some of those journalists do harbor racist views and they were using this, but we don't know that. Mm. You know, I need to be sure about that. Right. You know? Interesting. I think people turned against Megan uh, because she started lecturing everyone about how they should live. Yeah. That's really what, because people forget that when they got married, the British public was so for them. They loved them. I know. And the media were for them. So that, that it was all positive. So if if it was racism, there would be maybe a bit more. But no, people were for them. It's when she started flying around the world in a private jet and then lecturing everyone about their carbon footprint. And she'd gone off. She'd gone off in a private jet to Elton John's house for a party. And then she's saying to poor people, well, "You shouldn't. You shouldn't be flying." You know. I think people got pissed off with that. Yeah, of course. I think, rightfully. I think that's what it was. And she even had a dig at um, William and Kate because they'd had two. They'd had three kids. They just had their third kid. And then Harry and Meghan said, we wouldn't have more than two children because that's bad for the environment. Oh, God. Which is almost a bit like saying, you know. Yeah. Like, it's a bit of a dig. That a is a dig. dig. You know. And also, it's, she's used to the Hollywood style of celebrity where you can control the media. You know, you can right. kind of, like, decide what they report on and how they report. You can't do that in the royal family. Yeah. You just can't. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, I just think that I, I was like, Meh. I I see his point, but I just... What, Lawrence Fox? Yeah, and then she loses <laughs> the argument completely, and I was saying this on Dumpster Fire this week. Yeah. I'm like, when you say, oh, well, you have white privilege, I'm like, okay, now you've lost the argument That's completely. That's right. But, but the way people have reacted is that she won the argument by saying that. And I don't think she did. <laughs> no, now you've lost it. I My friend is like, no, the, this, this, these are, it's like the extremists. You yeah. know, he's like, they should not have a seat at the grown-up table. Well, she's an academic. Uh, obviously, she was an academic. That, you know, the, the, this white privilege thing hasn't really migrated seriously out of academia. It has. Uh... Well, no, as in the general public. Honestly, the majority of people in Britain don't don't give a damn or even know what it is. In means. America, it has migrated. Has it? Yeah, okay, because it's okay. in Hollywood. Right, okay. So okay. we have Chelsea Handler making her whole documentary about white privilege, about her white privilege for Netflix. Okay. And we have Jamila Jamil, who's constantly... Oh, but she's crazy, right? She's bananas. Yeah, I've seen a few tweets from her. I don't know who she is, but I've seen a few tweets. <laughs> she... Wow, because at first I thought it was a parody. I she's it was a joke. Um, dating James Blake. Who oh, apparently okay. is a male feminist. Okay. I, I mistrust the phrase male feminist. I just, do too. <laughs> just because whenever I hear it, then about six months later, they always come out as being a sexual predator. Yeah, so exactly. I, mean, I, I just kind of think, you know, if by feminist you mean we believe in equal rights for men and women, then aren't we all feminists? Yeah. If that's all it means. Yeah, that's all it means. But that's not really how it's being used at the moment, is it? No. So they were, yeah, she's constantly talking about white privilege and, okay. sh and, you know lecturing people from twitter and it's it it's definitely i think jumped to more mainstream okay maybe that's more an la thing or maybe it's uh i don't know it's definitely not um where i live <laughs> i think it's um because so many people we have an hr department right it seems to have trickled into hr so now i oh, hear yeah, from yeah. people all over america that they're getting we get everybody gets diversity trainings in america oh, well. now Actually, the my publisher in London, um, every member of staff at that publishing house has been given a book on white privilege and unconscious bias. See that to read. That's mainstream, though. That I is, mean, you're right. That is mainstream. But yeah. I, but it's still London bubble. Pu the publishing world is pretty woke. 
You know? Right. I would say it's gone more mainstream in America just because of all of the corporate yeah, people sure. who have to get diversity and inclusion trainings and they go to these day long seminars and yeah. stuff. And, you know, like it's. So I did something recently where I can't say who it was. I, I, I wrote some part of a script for a TV thing, um, but they can't credit me because it's meant to be an all women writers room so that <laughs> so, that's hilarious but what's funny is they 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 needed some extra writers to come in because the original scripts were so terrible <sighs> and it's like, so it's like and that's not mocking like just choose the right people right you know like right. male female it doesn't matter just choose the right people to begin with yeah but, it's not you know, because they're it, women it's just like maybe you know it, it's funny it's yeah. really funny to me it's like so what's happened to you, to you and since we talked? Have it, what's that, going on with you? Well, that was about 10 months. Well, I, uh, when we talked last time, I'd just done the book. I'd just done the Titani McGrath uh-huh. book. Uh, and now I've done a new Titani McGrath book. And the idea of this book is, so for people who, don't, who are listening who don't know, Titani McGrath is a Twitter satirical satirical. Has character. she been banned recently? No, she, well, no, she, she, had, seen... a, she had a seven-day ban about two months ago. What did she do? Oh, nothing. Like, honestly, the, t- <laughs> the tweet they sent me to show why I'd been banned was nothing. It was one of her tamest tweets you know it was crazy and i couldn't even work out i can't even remember what it was it was so it was so t- it was one of those throwaway ones i just i hadn't really thought much about it yeah it was definitely not offensive yeah. um anyway so she um she's re- the reason she's writing a new book is because i wanted to do another book but i wanted it to be different at the moment there's all these woke children's books i don't know if you've seen them yeah i've seen them like feminist baby yeah, and, yeah. and um, c is for consent and uh, the little girl who gave zero fucks that's another oh one. Oh my god and um <laughs> So Titania is writing a children's we are book. Destroying an entire <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Children. Exactly, we're radicalizing. We want them all to be active. So Titania's written a book called "My First Little Book of Intersectional Activism." Oh my god, I can't wait. Aimed at little kids, but of course it's not because she can't. She keeps using the jargon. She just expects kids to catch up. Right. She doesn't get it. Um, and she goes through all her woke heroes. You know, people like um, Emmeline Pankhurst and, and Rosa Parks and Mahatma Gandhi and Brie Larson, you know, yeah. people like that. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so it's it's been fun. I've just finished it. I might still do some changes to it, but that'll be out in a couple of months. But I thought that would be great because, you know, these woke children's books make me laugh anyway. They're just so They're funny. They're hilarious. They're teaching like four-year-olds about privilege. <laughs> and, things. <laughs> and these kids don't want it. They don't understand what's going on. It's great. Well, they don't understand the backlash either. And, yeah. and my friend and I were talking about this the other night because he has kids 19 years and on- younger, yeah. 19 to like 12. And I have family members who have kids in that age, yeah. and they're all Republicans. Right. Okay. I'm like, if you guys have done anything, it's radicalized an entire oh, generation yeah. of kids to love. Ben Shapiro has more 12 year old listeners yeah. than you could ever imagine. Don't they get this? That kids rebel against the norm. The fucking Republican Party is the counterculture. Yeah. Are you <laughs> yeah. kidding me? How that's did it. that happen? Well, yeah. It's, but that's what it does. That's what the woke movement does. It makes it, makes it really uncool to be woke. Yeah. That's what it will do. And they were talking, my nephews always just, we were talking about Chick-fil-A and they were like, I love Chick-fil-A, blah, blah, blah. I would have it every day if I could. (laughs) And then they were talking about how they didn't even know if Trump was Republican or Democrat. I'm like, what are they teaching you in school? (laughs) It was hilarious. And then they were talking about how how they had to watch all of Michelle Obama's nutrition videos and it made them hate Michelle Obama. I was like, this is what happened with DARE. This is what people forget about propaganda. Is that (laughs) like, there have been studies into propaganda. Propaganda only works if the people it's aimed at are already predisposed to agree. Right. Because actually what it does otherwise is it turns people even further against them. (laughs) Right. Right? That's what they got to get. And all these woke children's books and stuff, it is so obviously propagandizing. Yeah. So obvious, it's nakedly so. Yeah. So it, it, no, it's not going to work. And well, it, that was like the more the mainstream media goes after Bernie, yeah. the more I like him. Yeah, right. I don't agree with his politics, yeah. but the more I am inclined to be like, yeah, I, I, I'll defend Bernie. Yeah. You guys are d- actively trying to destroy I, this I man. I don't want a new generation of right wingers coming. <laughs> like, it's it's going to be crazy if that's going to happen. You know? They're coming. Yeah, I know. I mean, they're, I don't, but I think they're more, you know, libertarian. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm fine with liberal and libertarian. Because you know. they have very socially liberal views. Yeah. So socially, like, they're, they're not racist. They're all cool with, like, yeah, yeah. they grew up with LGBTQ because you and I were talking before we started recording about how fast a lot of those things like we don't talk enough about how much progress we've actually made yeah we've made they, loads lots yeah i mean even i'm a gen xer and the generation below me and the millennials yeah it was inconceivable to be married as a gay person 
Yeah. And 10 years later, until it's yesterday, totally it, conceivable. Yeah. Like, this is it. I mean, I think left and right is sort of over. Most people are just pretty liberal about most things. And they right. don't, you know, and they, and the problem is that the, uh, the social justice movement are not liberal. They're really not liberal. They don't have, and by that, I mean what we British people mean by liberal. Right, right. Is that, is that they, because here you mean sort of left wing when you say liberal, right? We it, did, although I think that might be changing now. Okay. It's, I think there's a split between liberal and leftist. Well, that's it a, used to be, it used to be left wing. Well, that's what I think. That's what I think. Liberalism, if you're going for what we should strive for and what, what we should support, it, that solves all problems. If you say you should be free to do whatever you want and say whatever you want, as long as it doesn't encroach on the freedoms of others, then surely everyone can get on board with that. Right. Isn't that a good thing? Right. Maybe. <laughs> That's my I, attempt. I at would a... think, but it seems like there's uh, a lot of disagreement in that regard. There seems to be, because they believe that language can, can normalize hate and the, there's all these sort of strange rules about what you can and can't say and things like that, which mm. I think, but I think like you say is right. The younger generation... They're bored of that. But also because young people like to laugh. They like to have fun. And they see this movement as being so po-faced and, and humorless. That's they what grew it is. up on memes. Yeah. This is a generation that literally gets their <laughs> news from freaking Snapchat. Yeah. And gets their entertainment from TikTok. Yeah. And their humor from memes. That's I it. mean, we're talking about the attention span. It's less than a goldfish. Right. <laughs> they've actually done studies and the average human attention span has been diminished so much by the internet that it is now less than a gold that's mad yeah really yeah that can't be right it's in my book it's in this book but right is it here. it's not it's, i don't think goldfish have attention span is a memory issue with goldfish isn't it they 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 forget things after seven seconds or maybe it like wasn't that. a goldfish <laughs> i might have to fact check that it's um i hope it was some, that's funnier <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's in the book Irresistible. He talks about how they've done all these studies and the average attention span. The younger you go, yeah. the the their attention span is like yeah, nothing. You know, when I when I meet young people, because I, I do talks at universities and things in the UK, and 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 the, the young people I've met are actually been great. They they've actually been like they want they want to be challenged and they want to push back against this stuff. Right. And the ones that have really caused the problems are the academics. Well, they don't. The problem that I see is that there's no way to push back against it. Right. That is the tricky instance of theory. Yeah. Is that anything you do to push against it is proof of that which they're accusing right. you of. Right. Oh, God, I hate that. So how do you push against something like that? Yeah, like, and, and, they do, and that's why they'll never stop. Because every time something doesn't go their way, they'll say that's proof of what we were saying all along. Yeah, the and it's, I think, somebody asked me the other day, how do you... Maybe it was Dave Rubin. He said, you know, what do you do for the people, the stragglers and or who might be on the fence? And I, I just think that once you have that mind virus, yeah. it, it is like a mind virus. I And I don't believe that you can be free of it until you get piled on by your own tribe. You step out of line. So they're like zombies. A little bit. And then it's like they'll step out of line and then they'll see it from another perspective. Yeah. And so until it affects, until that mob turns on them or until that they step out of what is the approved message, yeah. then then they don't see, they don't, they won't see it. They'll just well, then, kind of be part of it. That means there's hope for the future because they all eventually turn on each other. Yeah. They really do. But I think there's going to be a load of money to be made and yeah. rehabilitating a lot of the... Because wh where do you go from this idea of permanent victimhood? Well, also, it's really scary to suddenly change your whole worldview. If, you, if, you, if, you're, if you've bought into this social justice thing so wholesale, there's a kind of comfort to that. Because you, firstly, you feel like you're morally superior to everyone else. Right. And you've got that real glow of righteousness, which is really tempting and alluring. And it's, the, it's supported by mainstream culture. Right. But then what happens if you suddenly realize... It's all bullshit. That <laughs> yeah, must really hurt. That must really hurt. And and people won't. It's like realizing your God doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. That must. I mean, if, even Charles Darwin had a real issue with his own discoveries. Yeah. He hated it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so <laughs> imagine the pain that is going to cause some people. It's. I went through a minor version of this. Right, I, I think, think I was always very open minded and what. But I've talked a lot about how just coming from the like liberal just not paying that much attention mine is more a product of not paying attention okay and being drunk and blacked out and not really being in a and being apolitical yeah, and yeah. then being and being thrown into it and trying to figure out what the heck <laughs> but i do remember 
feeling really isolated in that transition in 2016. Yeah, yeah. And had it not been for the internet and Twitter and meeting people like yourself and everybody else who's come through on Watkins Welcome and having conversation, ha- being able to reach out of this bubble, yeah. I don't, I think I would have well, gone insane. Then, then we need some empathy. We need to be able to uh, de- help de-radicalize people. Maybe that's the thing. It is. It, I mean, it, they're being radicalized. That's yeah. really what it is. And then how do you... I love how they're the ones who are like, we need to figure out how to de-radicalize the young white men on YouTube. And yeah. I'm like, we're trying to figure out how to de-radicalize you guys. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They've, yeah, they're, they're so paranoid about this stuff. Yeah. It's really funny. It's like everywhere you look, there are Nazis. You know, it's like uh, they put on a... And I feel sorry for that sort of person. It must be horrible yeah. thinking that everyone's a Nazi. Yeah. What a horrible way to live. It is. <laughs> like, how depressing. It's sad. So... I think the Douglas Murray thing is amazing. What's his new book called again? The it's, Madness of Crowds. Oh, it's so good. It's really great. And it's and we, we wanted to talk about those issues. I mean, like, I've come at it from the satirical angle and he's come at it from the, you know, he's written about it in a, this serious, rigorous, argumentative approach. It's very brilliant. And um, we thought it'd be a nice... We did a, an event together recently in London where we just talked. It's online, actually. It's on YouTube. And we just talked for an hour. And we thought, let's take this on tour and see what happens. Yeah. I think, why not? You know, yeah. what have we got to lose? Sure, there'll be riots. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, most of the people who send these messages, they don't turn up in the end, do they? They, they, they they're, well, I hope not. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing that about even like these book cancelings. I think yeah. they get nervous and spooked and they are, then they're worried they can't, well, they can't. It's it's so litigious in America. I think everyone's worried like if one person breaks a nail, they're going to get sued. I think we'll maybe I know we've had complaints to all the venues, right? I know that people have been complaining. But I also know that when we originally programmed the tour, there were a number of venues that said no. And I've I've saved the emails. I loved one of them said um oh, what was it? It said um we are a woke venue. We're not going to have an, a, an event that is resisting wokeness. I mean, they said it that explicitly. Oh, that's good. And then someone else said, "Why would we have two very very white people performing that literally like that this is like a, a predominantly white area what yeah. do you think the, what do you do what are you talking yeah, about yeah. and never mind that the, uh, the the person who's moderating the event she's actually bame she's um she's half um canadian indigenous canadian but they don't but because she doesn't look it i guess they've missed I that i think bit. titania mcgrath should make some kind of i mean you probably couldn't do it on twitter but it is getting to the point where and i've made this joke about just the extinction rebellion people i'm like yeah. we're a couple of days away from it them being like everyone should kill them if you care about the environment you'll yeah. kill yourself yeah exactly and yeah. i feel like that's the the feeling i'm really starting to get from about the whiteness like yeah, if yeah, you yeah. really care about white privilege yeah. and you're white you'll kill yourself do you know what <laughs> if i tweeted that that would get a banned. yeah it would i might do that later today no Let's see don't, what... <laughs> don't get banned. oh because you're trying to kill her well i think it'd be quite nice to just focus on the book <laughs> like, yeah, don't know. kill her you need the platform don't do it all right all right don't do it but there's a chapter in the new book on greta thunberg so we'll see how that goes down but i think that because people are so sensitive about oh that my issue god yeah i made a whole it? youtube video making fun of her and and i kept on saying like the whole bit through the whole video was me being like how yeah. <laughs> shame on you look I'm not saying that we should all be picking on some 16 year old but like she's such a major public figure I think if you don't make fun of that that's 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 a sort of dereliction isn't it like she I'm sorry but she had a crazy stage mom who didn't get to live her dreams as being famous and yeah. she just projected it all on her child yeah exactly who apparently is on the spectrum oh she is yes absolutely and, She's got now, Asperger's. and has depression and you're gonna put her this is like I mean I got piled on after Parkland because I was saying I was criticizing the parents yeah. for letting their kids oh, be look, it's faces not, of this. It's um, not her fault. It's not her fault. But the parents are crazy. And also, you've got to ask yourself the question. What if, what if she wants to change her mind at some point? <laughs> She's 16 years old. I know. Most of us change our minds at like 24, 25. She's going to find it so difficult because she's got like a million fans who will just kill themselves. I know. If she turns around, I'd love it though if like in four years time, she turns around and just says, ah, it's all bollocks. Now nah, I got it wrong. Sorry. That uh, was the, a whole thing about the woman, the mattress woman. The Remember the woman who carried around yes, the mattress? Yes, I do, yeah. And then there was an article that came out recently about how she had been red-pilled. 
Has she been? I read something about it. Oh, yeah, wow. there was some article like the red pill. It can up. happen. What was her name? I, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. She carried it around campus all the time. It was an art what thing. What was her name? I'm going to look it up. That can happen to anyone. They can suddenly change their mind. And what, what do you do then? <laughs> well, apparently now she's been red pilled. Right. Quote okay. So if you change your mind, you're or you you've gone. But do you notice with Greta that all the world leaders want to sit? They want to be seen that they'll sit there and listen to her, and she gets like meetings with the, everyone. I know. Like um, she was at Davos. Like yeah, she was at Davos <laughs> exactly. Isn't she hanging out with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? And, yes. Like. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. Emma Sokowitz. Yes, no, I remember this story. And she was carrying a mattress from lecture to lecture. Yeah, because then she was discredited, I believe. Well, it, yes, because... And, and weren't the, some of the men that she'd accused, they, they were quite angry about this because... The, I, from what I understand it, it wasn't... Um, it wasn't all real, was it? It wasn't substantiated. And then how Mattress Girl changed her mind. This was kind of the recent. Uh, the New York's magazine, The Cut, published an article. Did, Megan, did Emma Sokowitz get red-pilled? They will hate her now for that. But They'll it's hate basically, her. Basically, she's now 27, who became famous in 2014 for dragging her mattress around Columbia University's campus to protest the university's handling of her alleged sexual assault. And then everybody started carrying around pillows. She now listens to Jordan Peterson. Ah! <laughs> she attended Reason writer Robbie Suave's book party for Panic Attack. Wow. In the book, Suave writes critically of Salkowitz. And yet she has recently found herself engaging with many libertarians and conservatives. And so now she's been red pilled. So you know what this is like? This is like when, you know, those evangelical Christian pastors for years, they're preaching about how gays are evil and everything. And then they get caught with a rent boy doing crystal meth yeah, or something. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a bit like that. And then suddenly it just all turns around. It's, but I think she got discredited, piled on. Right. And that's what led to her awakening okay so i think that she was you know i was an it i said this on i said this on dumpster fire this week i was alexandria ocasio cortez when i was her age right maybe a little younger yeah but i was just i, I if i wasn't drunk yeah. and i was a bartender but if i had had power and a platform yeah i would have definitely been like give all the pores your money rich people yeah and I was waiting on rich people and I hated them. So this is it. Like kids, the <laughs> kids don't know very much. And I didn't understand. And, I, and, and like, that's fine. And it's okay to get things wrong when you're a kid. And it's okay. But what you are allowed to change your mind. And I worry that if you elevate a 16 year old with Asperger's on the world stage, you know, she that's not nice to her. <laughs> no. Because she, cause she you know, someone, who was it I was talking to recently? Someone told me about this idea that, you know, because if you criticize Greta Thunberg, you're called a bully, right? Right. So he was saying, you know, the right, right wing people what they need to do what the republicans need to do is get like a 12 year old disabled black kid to advance their idea about fiscal policy <laughs> and then no one can have a go at them because like you've covered every base i think that's a really good idea we need like a what is it like a mascot for capitalism yeah that's yeah but untouchable untouchable yeah like a gay trans 11 year old disabled <laughs> kid and then anyone who d disagrees with your view Who's like an expert in free market yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and you, you know if it was total economic libertarian <laughs> and if you if you disagree you'll be totally you'll be bullying yeah you're I, bullying yeah sorry think, guys <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how you should do it that's hilarious <laughs> so tell us where we can find you you can find me on Twitter until I get banned, and that is at, <laughs> at Titania <laughs> McGrath. Until Titania McGrath tweets, if white people cared so much about their privilege, they would all kill themselves. Well, she, she, <laughs> well when, I, when she was interviewed by Playboy, was it, Play no, Penthouse, sorry, she was interviewed mm. by Penthouse, and the last question was, how can I, as a male ally, help your cause? <laughs> Did you say kill yourself? I said kill yourself. <laughs> But I could write that in an interview, but not right. on Twitter. Because on Twitter, it would be like, you're inciting suicide. You're inciting suicide. As if anyone would kill themselves if Titania McGrath told them to. I mean. <laughs> like, they would, they'd would have to be pretty unhinged already <laughs> to do that. Oh, I really want to tweet that now. You shouldn't have put that seed in my mind because I'll probably do it when I'm tired and I'm not thinking. Or you're like a little buzz. Yeah. You're be like, like oh, fuck, fuck it. it. Yeah. And I'll just... <laughs> If I'm pissed off at Twitter, I'll be like, fuck it, you know. I need to, you need to let me know if you do so I can retweet That's it. That's really funny. <laughs> Yeah, if you really care about white privilege, yeah. You'll you, kill yourself. Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to clip this from my thing. They're going to be like, Bridget Phetasy was advocating exactly. for mass suicide the other day. Yeah, exactly. You can't She win. could get a hashtag trending on that one. What? Yep, kill yourself. White people kill yourself. <laughs> white people kill yourself. <laughs> you <know? laughs> 
Yeah, yeah they, and we can't even make that joke because all of the people who are killing themselves are pretty much it, the the deaths of despair are predominantly white. Oh, are in they? The United States. Yeah. They're also predominantly male. Suicides yeah. are much more sort of male. Yeah. Male thing, you know. So it probably would be a joke that's maybe too on the nose. Right. I see. Yeah. Well, anyway, she's still online at the moment, and uh, then I'm on I'm on Twitter at Andrew Doyle underscore com, so you can find me there. But that's the that's the side where like I treat them very differently. Like on Titania, I take the piss on my own account. I don't. I just. I I talk seriously about yeah stuff, yeah you know? i like that which is kind of I, that's what i prefer you know <sighs> i have a parody account but it's run by someone else who like i saw that does but, me better than i do myself but is that someone you know and like i know them now but right. i didn't it's not someone i knew at all i thought maybe it was that's you. how they got my attention i was like how is this person i was like am i schizophrenic i you thought know? <laughs> i thought you were doing it no Okay. No, it is not me. Okay. It is a completely separate person <laughs> who lives in another state. That's funny. Who I have never met in real life. Okay. Not me. All right. So it's, yeah, that was crazy to have somebody. I'm like, wow, I need you to run my account. Yeah. Because it's the best of me. It's like all me with none of the insecurity. Yeah. So it's, it's not <laughs> mocking you. It's, it's, it's p- true parody. It's like a right. parody of my account. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's another one that's <laughs> popped up, Feral Fantasy, because I do this thing on Dumpster Fire where it's like, I'm feral. Yeah. And so now there's another one that popped up. All right. Well, I'm I won't like, retweet oh, that one then because I get confused and I just... Better you know. Fantasy? Yeah, Better yeah. Fantasy. <laughs> it is the Better Fantasy, truly. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by again. No, this was fun. Thank you. As usual. Thank you very much. Thank you for the coffee and the... There was nut milk in that, I think. Is yes. That right? Yeah, it's very mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Nut pods. <laughs> I, I should see if they'll advertise. That's very LA. Yeah. You know? So good. Yeah. We don't have that in London. We Not don't do yet. That. No, we just take it straight from the cow. <laughs> That's what we do. Very, very poor, very basic. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the weekly check in with Bridget and cousin Maggie. Maggie and I are talking because it is actual apocalypse mode. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Bridget's brother has started prepping, which means. Shit yeah. just got serious. <laughs> <laughs> my brother's in, in the first responder industry. We're all in a group. Me, my siblings and I are all in a, a group chat and there's five of us. So And everybody is equally hilarious in my family. <laughs> my brother probably being the funniest. <laughs> I don't know. It's don't so know. It's, it's so hard because everybody has their moments. Yeah. That they're really just so it's one of my great joys is this group chat with my siblings. Uh-huh. And they were like, we're stocking up. I'm like, oh, you sweet little innocent flowers who don't have to live like this all the time. <laughs> They're like, we're getting water. It's like, yeah, I always have freaking water. The prepper in me is just overjoyed at these moments. And then they were talking about quarantine, which I know is really serious. But I was like, I, I get kind of excited <laughs> at the idea of quarantine. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have to go anywhere. I have a reason not to go anywhere. (laughs) I feel like everyone is kind of, it would suck if you couldn't work remotely. Yeah. But if you can work remotely. Well, the only problem would be Hope. She'd be going bonkers. Yeah. Trapped in her little backyard. Are you not even allowed to walk your dog on a quarantine? I have no idea what the rules of a quarantine are. Have we ever lived through a quarantine? No. No. (laughs) This is weird. I mean, it's weird, weird times. Coronavirus or whatever it's called now. Just COVID. Yeah. Why did they rebrand it? I have no idea. It was probably coronavirus was probably like technically inaccurate or something, but it still doesn't make sense to me why they would change the name that everyone knows. I'm so cynical. I was like, did Corona sue them? The beer? (laughs) They're like, you're really hurting our sales, so <laughs> you need to change the name of this infectious disease that's spreading. Yeah. Getting... Can you change the name of your pandemic? I've got to get, I've got to stock up, Jesus. I For all of our apocalypse talk, Maggie, I'm dismayed. I know. Well, I was so prepped and ready, but then I, when I was, did my big clean out last year, I had to get rid of basically all my food because it all exploded. It all expired for a long time. Um, so I have to, and I, I just haven't restocked, so I need to get food. Turns out canned goods aren't good forever. forever. Like I thought they were. Yep. But all, uh, you made the excellent suggestion of just ordering it, which I didn't even think of. So thank you very much. Shelf stable nut butters. 
There's something so dirty about that term. <laughs> <laughs> nut butters. It's the shelf stable nut butters. Though. I it's could that whole live phrase. on nut butters anyway. Got to be lay out some money here, I guess. <laughs> it's worth it. Mm. It's worth it because you just don't want to be one of the idiots in the masses who aren't prepared, which is usually like 90% of people. Yeah. And which in California is unacceptable. It's ridiculous. Everybody should be like chilling. Everyone uh-huh. should be like, yeah, I'm ready for this. I'm anyway, maybe go. I don't have enough masks. Uh huh. Which they, I read this whole thing and it's like, they the don't masks. even help. They actually even, they're actually, they spread more disease <laughs> than really? they. Yeah, unless you have like a full like, air respirator I mask have one of, those. of course you do <laughs> but i have it because of burning man uh-huh you need it there when the dust storms blow up right my little like medical masks aren't gonna do jack shit i have like a full apocalypse one <laughs> of course you do where'd you get it um at a hardware store huh. it wasn't cheap no i'm not i'm sure it wasn't i want like the full hazmat you, i know you do <laughs> There's not really going to be much you can do. No. In California. In in Los Angeles? No. Forget it. The only way is to either preemptively get the fuck out. Like we were talking today. We're like, should, should we go visit friends in Arizona? <laughs> like their remote Arizona homes huh. that they live in. Huh. Yeah, it's funny. Everybody's like kind of carrying on as usual, but you really aren't. You can really never know how disruptive something like this is until suddenly everybody's canceling their tours and every you know right now I got booked for like three things in May and I'm like <laughs> I don't know if I want to be around lots of people in May yeah. come May yeah and our president seems to think it will all be taken care of by the spring which is either extremely ignorant or he knows something we don't <laughs> Which creeps me out. Uh huh. Well, I mean, you were saying that it, they're saying prepare for a three month quarantine, which is that's well, crazy. That's well, they've been on quarantine in certain provinces in China for right. months now, for at least a month now. Right. And I don't know that I. They basically let one person leave to go get supplies once a week from the house. Wow. I think is in some places I was reading. And I mean, God even freaking knows because we don't hear any, we don't know right. in China what's going on. Right. It reminds me of that movie. God, I can't remember what it's called. It's a Steven Soderbergh movie with Kate Winslet. And it's about this, like a pandemic, pandemic sweeps. It comes from China. Gwyneth Paltrow dies immediately. <laughs> 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 and it's like Matt Damon's in it. It's like uh it, it's a pretty realistic portrayal of what something like this would look at, look like. Well, they were saying I was talking to some someone in the DMs before I had to go off for Lent or before I went off for Lent and I was like, you know, they say that it would if they if you do the math and it's like such a certain percentage of people get it and that per- and then a certain percentage of those people die it would be 150 million people and i'm like that doesn't seem like that many people but it's also a lot it's a lot of people it's I mean, a lot of people but it doesn't there's so many billions of us right but it still it seems it's, low it's it's that's a fuck ton of people i think if there was a pandemic that was a real pandemic it would wipe out like a billion of us. <laughs> Bite your tongue. Well, it's called Contagion. That's the movie. Oh yeah, I've heard of that yeah. movie. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a pandemic. I mean, 150 million. No, it's still that's a it's a lot of people. I mean, yeah, remember when like, we were doing the research for your flu epidemic. Hometown. But there were so many less people mm. on Earth. Right. There was like a billion people. Right. It's just crazy. Percentage wise. Percentage wise, that the amount of people that died were so, it was so much more. Well, I've been reading about like what it actually does to your body, and it is gnarly. It is a f- really, really gnarly virus. It will fuck you up. <laughs> but people survive it, right? They 
do, but it can still cause lasting damage to like your lungs. But it's it doesn't just attack your lungs; it can attack your kidneys, your liver. It can cause like hemorrhagic bleeding or Ugh. bleeding. It's just like there's there's That's like Ebola. It can, but it's not as it's not like Ebola like the way it, Ebola just causes you to bleed everywhere. But it can attack your body in different ways, which is not common yeah usually there there's like one vector one entry point uh, yeah not that i know what i'm talking about but still yeah it's it's not good i was like what's the big deal about this and then i was like oh yes it's quite a big deal <laughs> that was like us with the flu i'm like what are, what's the big deal about the flu pandemic and then i read what did this deep dive into it and i was like oh turns out it was a big deal yeah and the flu i was reading that what happens is these secondary deaths because when something like this happens and hospital beds are full of people with the coronavirus, for instance, mm-hmm. then pe- there are no beds for people with the flu. So then the percentages of all these other things go up because the beds are filled with people who have the the primary right. pandemic thing. Right, right. And the flu, there's some gnarly flus going around this year. The flu is killing, I I heard some statistic where the flu had killed more children by this point of the year than any time on record. Is it so? Or the second most. I don't know. It's so, it doesn't, I don't mean it to be callous because if somebody I loved died of the flu or anything or COVID, it would be obviously tragic and horrible horrifying and horrible and it's even worse when it's kids but there is a part of me that's like this is just mother nature doing your thing yeah i'm talking about this for like 20 years yeah since i was 20 years old i'm like she'll shake us off like fleas when she needs to get rid of us they've been predicting this i mean not not that it's happened in the way they've been predicting it yet but they've been predicting a a widespread pandemic of some sort that will really Kind of. But doesn't it feel like we're living in a simulation too? Just with the political climate <laughs> and then all the crap going on and it's the election year and then this comes like seven months before the election. And I'm looking at Bridget right now and she's got a fucking cross <laughs> on her forehead. I keep forgetting A cross that. of ashes because it's Ash Wednesday <laughs> and I keep looking at you. I'm like, this is like, talk about biblical <laughs> times. <laughs> Yeah, I know. no. Talk about like apocalyptic biblical, biblical <laughs> times. I'm just staring at this fucking cr- black cross on your forehead. <laughs> like that's kind of disturbing, Bridget. It's really making me uh, a little uncomfortable. <laughs> you should know what the meaning of this cross is. It's ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Maybe that's why I'm feeling particularly morbid l- today. Yeah, not even <laughs> morbid. Just kind of chill about dying. Uh huh. <laughs> like, Whatever. Eh. It's all part of the process. Well, our entire theme was the apocalypse. We started and ended with the apocalypse now. Yeah, it does feel so simulation-y. Yeah. Yeah, the cross is creepy. I like it. Uh I love going out in public with it. Uh (laughs) Maybe I should go to Costco right now and stock up with my Ash Wednesday cross. Wide birth. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, I came in and I was like, you're such a good Catholic girl. It's so funny to, to just know that pe- small little piece of you still clings to that you know you I don't I think it's Mame honestly yeah I was looking at the picture of her earlier that I have because for some reason Easter just always reminds me of Ooh, yeah Mame, totally our grandmother our grandmother and she loved Easter mm-hmm. and I don't know she was such a good Catholic and for some reason I've always loved Lent I don't know why I know you and it could still Strictly be because it comes around the time that daylight savings ends, and I freaking hate daylight savings. Mm-hmm. Like even today, just the weather—it's so nice. I feel like happy and energized, mm. and it's weird that I can still kind of—I feel like I do still get seasonal depression, even in a not in a not cold place where it's gray all the time, just because of the light. Because it gets light, it gets dark so early, and maybe it's just also like wired into me. Yeah, they need to hibernate. No, I don't want to though. But well, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Here's hoping we all don't need to be in quarantine. 
If anything, it's a good reminder for people to be prepared because the more people that are prepared, the less chaos there is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you I was joking yesterday on Twitter. I said, you have to be prepared because no one is coming. I, I think it's stupid to expect the government to try and help you ever. And then also be prepared for people that who aren't prepared to come try and take your shit. It's true. <laughs> Which is why I have a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> with a cross on her forehead. She's not to be messed with. <laughs> I feel like if you came to the door, like <laughs> if some marauders tried to invade and if I just went to the fireplace and put a quick cross on my forehead, it would just creep people out enough to be like, yeah, we're not going to fuck a, with her. And just had a crossbow instead of like a gun. <laughs> people are like, well, she's obviously got some sort of knowledge or something on her side we'll we'll leave that one alone we'll just keep walking to the next house <laughs> but um everyone i'm off twitter for lent so give me a give me a follow you can still sign up on i'm still kind of it's a little cheating because locals is so much like twitter mm. and my dad sent me the most boomer text ever today and I and I can post it. I posted it for everyone on locals, uh -huh. so you can still sign up on locals and not have to pay. Right, you just don't get all the goods. Right. So if you're still missing my my wit and my dad text that I'm posting, like this this little number that he sent, I was talking to him about Bernie. We always text after like the political debates, and I said Bernie is insane. I can't believe he's winning. And my dad texted today. Agree. It looks like the free-for-all virus is rapidly spreading around the country. It started in the Midwest and is expected to affect millions in many states next week. Wall Street is plummet plummeting with fear of its effects. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most dad joke, boomer joke oh, ever. Boy. I don't know if he got it off the internet or if he made it up. I don't know. The free-for-all virus. <laughs> <laughs> well... So yeah, you can so that one's open to the public. I posted it. Yeah, go to locals to keep track of Bridget. Go Ch to fantasy.com, sign up, subscribe if you want. And always keep in touch. Check out Dumpster Fire on YouTube too. Yep. Merch and shirts, BridgetFantasy.com. We're everywhere. Just like the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week for another riveting episode that will change your life, help you get out of your own way, and solve all the world's problems. I want to thank Ricochet, our composer Jared Elias, my co-producer and cousin Maggie, and all of you out there listening. This has been Walk-In's Welcome with Bridget Fettesy. I'm Bridget Fettesy, and you're welcome. It's <laughs> <laughs> the dumbest line. <laughs>